<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the episode two of Jason and David Build Preact Fire in a very unorganized fashion. Uh, we were six minutes late today, which I think is a record as far as being on time. So yep. <laughs> we're it's the earliest I've been for a meeting all day. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we're happy to have you all. Uh, I got my my tea going, and um, yeah, <laughs> your beverage of choice. So today we are going to we have a new setup today, so that'll be interesting. Um, but we are going to take the uh, hooks we made last time with uh, use Firestore doc data to sync doc data in real time, and instead of moving on to collections or other features that you would think we would logically do. No, we're not going to do that. We are going to add in um, uh, lazy loading because it's really important to uh, figure out how you're going to lazy load at first so you don't write a bunch of other features. And then you're like, how do I lazy load? Uh, that's going to be a big uh, bolt on at the end. So that is today. We're going to lazy load. We have a local, we're running locally today and we're going to compare bundle sizes and stuff. So we are here. And let me let me find my browser tab. So we let's just let's just pretend like this is going to build. Um, so this is our document. Uh, ooh, uh, what am I doing? All right, close the drawer. So Jason, tell me why this is wrong because I know this is wrong, but I can't exactly remember why it is wrong because this will infinitely loop. Right. Uh, so if I recall, uh, we are calling query on snapshot. And every time that gets a new value, it will call update. Uh, and that will update the state value, which will cause value to change. When value changes, this effect reruns. So basically, we keep resubscribing to the value, getting an update, and then uh, getting a new value, which we then cause to resubscribe and get an update and get a new value. That's right, because this needs to be the reference needs to be memoized, right? Uh, yes, or I'm looking to see what I was toying with last time. Um, I think I just removed value from, uh, from the dependencies because it's not okay. being used in there. Oh yes. That does not need to be used because it's, uh, it's yes. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, if we update the ESLint config, that may tell us. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like oh, to keep oh, no, it. Yeah. Huh. I like to keep my yes config lint uh, light so it doesn't yell at me. Yes. Even though it's like yelling at me for good reason, I'm like, eh. Yeah. Eh. I just don't want to be yelled at. <laughs> Ask nicer. Ask nicer. How about how about like a like a blue teal squiggly instead of a red squiggly? That's you yeah. Know, you know. Or a clippy. A clippy. They'd be like, hi, it looks like you don't want that in your dependency or <laughs> I see you're trying to create an exhaustive list of dependency variables. Is that something I, I can help you with? I like how that's a mix between like I can be your Clippy. That's like a uh, like it's like a mix between Stewie and Clippy. Is the voice of Clippy <laughs> Stewie? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> All right, so remove that out of there. Yeah, so I think we kill that. Uh, ID field, ID field was in data, data. I think we could just, oh, th this is get the data snapshot and. This is adding, this is not very well uh, thought out. Uh, basically, we, this is, because when you unwrap the snapshot, you lose the ID of the document. So this is a way to map that back into it, uh, which is what most people do when they unwrap a snapshot. They just, they just tech you just stick it back in the data object. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Yeah, it saves a second use state and all that. Um, my guess is that this should be fine now. So ID field is um, is going to theoretically be the same value every time. Query is a constant fire stored query. Ah, so that's that's going to be the kicker here. If we go to what component was using this app, I think. No. I don't know if we actually had a component set up that was using this yet. No. Gotcha. 
I'll pull our, our old app component in. Uh, oh, I, I removed the thing because I don't know how to live stream. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I was trying to take a screenshot for Twitter to be uh, like, hey, look, because I'm wearing, no one's said anything yet, but I'm wearing my ugly Firebase Christmas sweater. I like it. Yeah. I think we need ugly Preact Christmas sweaters. I I just have ugly Preact t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> but I, I should definitely get a, a Christmas sweater going. That seems like a good idea. And what I've learned is, is that it really, you know, it, it, it's not, I don't, it's, it's, you can wear this all year round. I, I don't just wear this in December, <laughs> so. Oh, Sasha, oh, okay. Christian, Sasha. Uh, Sasha is saying a small thing. I think the value should be cleared every time ID is changed. So when you navigate between pages, you can show a loading state. Uh, technically, yeah. So query is going to change. I, that's that's sort of the thing that we're going to be uh, that we're going to be doing in this particular live stream. Right now, we just return like we're treating value as a scalar. Um, so it'll just mm -hmm. return the old one until it has a new one. And it, like in terms of like uh, showing something useful that is desirable in some cases, right? If you were right. switching pages, you're actually going to show the old page until the new one comes in. Um, but that's where last time I think we were talking about returning uh, sort of a multi-value thing where it was like value, error, right. trying to encourage error handling, and then pending, which if there is a value being loaded, uh, it'll be an unresolved mess. Uh, otherwise, it'll be null in that way. So like, you'll still have the old value if that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. But you could also just say, hey, if pending, don't use the value. Uh, right. So. That's interesting. And also what I'd like to provide is probably whenever I get to three parameters, I start thinking you need like a different API signature. But yeah. um, uh, one other parameter that would be interesting is like initial value data. Um, since you do mm -hmm. not have control over use state um, in here, it should allow you to do that. And then that way too, it will uh, give you something immediately. And then that also will be very helpful when we get to our lazy loading because the app can run you know, just happily while the Firebase lay lo lazy loads in the background. Yeah, you could see like grabbing pre-rendered or SSR data exactly. out of a script tag somewhere and sticking it there as a still well revalidate. Yeah, um, and uh, all, even honestly, even just for performance reasons, you're probably better off too just being like, please wait while we load your tasks. <laughs> yeah, some sort of a UI. So I, I found the other pieces here. So you had nicely organized them. So there's app. Um, I don't know how to move you to where I am, but there's app.js in the Preact Fire uh, directory, and that's our provider. And then um, there is oh, weird spacing there. There is a use Firebase app. Yes. I'm trying to remember what that was doing. So. And addressing the comments, uh, Dewog Father, I don't know if that's how you say that, uh, but these Firebase sweaters, they are, uh, they they were made like two years ago and um, they were sent out to team members. So I don't even know how to get to another one, but I've always thought we should have a marketplace because we have pretty dope swag. And Paul Ender, always good seeing you. Oh, and I did this on the last live stream I did. So I'm going to think Jason and I would try to adopt this one where we kind of like batch our time, where we like batch the time focusing on the app. And then when I go to like, you know, I get to like a natural stopping point, then I go and address the comments and then I go back. So if I don't answer your one right away, uh, <laughs> I don't answer your one right away. It's because I can't multitask. Single threaded organism. I'm basically JavaScript. Um, <laughs> without workers. Um, and I'll do the last few, uh, Chris Sevaleha. That's right. I'm one of the few people who know how to say Chris Sevaleha. Uh, says he'll pay me for my sweater. And I think this is a priceless like item. I think I pass this down to my family. Uh, <laughs> I, I can part with it for any price. My father's father and my father's father before him. My son's going to be like, uh, yeah, Grandpa What's was <laughs> and he gave me the sweater. Uh, if you want to keep it, you can. There's also a goodwill down the block. Um, 
And Ben Lesh is here. He came here for the streaming data. And he also wants a new Firebase swag. Yeah, I haven't gotten new Firebase swag in a while, too. I need to check in on that. But uh I'm here for the streaming data. You'll leave here without the streaming data. <laughs> <laughs> came here for the streaming data. Just no, just you know, you just keep subscribing. No unsubscribe. Yeah. That's another thing we can talk about too, is putting RX Fire as the engine of this. I, I consider mm. RX Fire like the web components of my data layer. So whenever I build libraries with uh, Firebase, I depend on RX Fire because it does all this stuff, and then uh, you know that I have to re-implement every library. And then RxJS, the uh, especially when it gets even lighter, ends up being lighter than some core Firebase libraries. So I can use RX as a base to load core Firebase libraries. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's all. That's all kind of an experimental mindset right now. All right, so I'm now batching into the code. Indeed. So I keep hitting this up. All right, so we have these error states. We have uh, we have error pending. Uh, so where so error I believe uh, comes inside of here. So it's like error because it's basically an observable, um, and then so. I guess I believe this only gets called. I guess I might as well do it. By the way, I learned a trick from you. Uh, one hobby of mine to the audience is I used to go through um, Jason's like uh, repos, like Undom and stuff like that, and how to rebuild them. Um, and then one little trick I learned because I always used to write these like utility methods for checking for null. Uh, and so unless I have this totally wrong, I remember seeing from your code even like a little comment is that if I just say not equal undefined. It's just it works for all situations because of the yeah you can use undefined or null yeah because of the coercion indeed uh, and uh, lint will yes lint will sometimes yell at me but I'm like mm -mm, it works <laughs> I think I somewhere found a way to tweak that rule so that it specifically will allow double equals and not equal with uh, null and undefined. And like everything else is a is a no op, right? Because you don't want the triple equals, then it will all break, <laughs> right? Um, so, but it's a nice little trick because then you don't always have to. I, I I'm okay with inlining this. I think it's like so easy to remember and you know, not changing. So I I like to keep it um, instead of doing like a fancy one. Oh oh, what are you doing down there? I don't know. We ended up with extra code here. <laughs> This is the first time we're using VS Code Live Share, so this is. Uh, I feel like I can safely delete that. <laughs> <laughs> it appeared to just be duplicated from above. All right. Yeah. Whoa. That. How many? Is this just like a live share error or like? Whoa. Look, look at is this. it when I switch files? Because look how many of them there are. <laughs> Every time you scroll down, it's duplicating. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It brings a whole nother meaning to infinite scroll. <laughs> oh no, I deleted more. I feel like I need to, there's definitely a race condition. Oh my gosh, I can see it in the mini map, just trying to <laughs> grow and grow. Did okay, it just delete it for you? Yeah, like you can see it in the mini map. Anytime anyone tries to scroll, it just keeps growing. See, it's weird because when I scroll, it's fine for me and I don't see your duplicates. What? All right, I'm going to close out. Yeah, close out and, and don't save and then reopen the file. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. <laughs> Fan spins up. It's back. Weird. Oh, it, oh, it also restored your unsaved file. Really? Okay. Are you resetting to disk copy or whatever? I, forget what that it, is. I think this is like the disk copy now. It won't. Let me just delete all this and, and see what happens. Because it's it's really wanting to. Oh, uh, weird. When I clicked on you to follow you, it. Uh, <laughs> It showed me all those insane updates. It's really, this is not going good. This is, uh, oh man, yeah, see how it's like, uh, it's it's trying to d duplicate the brackets. This is great live uh, television. Um, oh wait, stuck MacBook key? Do, do you have a stuck MacBook key? I don't have a stuck, well, actually I might. It's a good chance. I um, can see it, it duplicating for you. Yeah, it is, but I don't have a stuck MacBook key. You should join your own live share link. Do uh, the browser one. All right, all right. Let me close out of this before horrible things. I'm just going to just get rid of that. Oh, look. There were two open. 
How does that even happen? It's the same file. Okay, is that okay? It seems to have stopped. Wait, or is it continue? No, nope, it's continuing. It's, okay, it's okay, on, okay. Yeah. okay. Or is there like a third open somewhere? <laughs> okay, all right. Please excuse us while we deal with our technical difficulties. <laughs> um, I am going to join that link that you sent me. I'll say uh, the web-based version of this seems to work great. Props, <laughs> props to the VS Code Live Share team. Don't you know, know there's a lot of VS Code integration, but those native apps they really just can't keep up with the power of the web. Yeah. <laughs> like they always say. All right, uh, let me see how this goes. Um, all right. If you are just joining us now, we are trying to figure out how to use VS Code Live Share. Um, open Live Share for VS Code. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I'm gonna try. I am also in this version, which is this. Just, okay. This is long story short. I had it set up in here to begin with, and here I am. Wait, and it. it I don't know if it's opening. Okay, might be. So what's happening here then is I'm going to be using the browser version of Live Share, which is connected to my machine. So I'm using my I'm using a browser version to proxy into my machine. Yep. Okay. Wait. All right. Looks like it looks like it's doing something. All right. And now we go into document and let's see if it doesn't uh, just infinitely loop. I need to share this, but I want to make sure it's like an. Oh yeah, that looks normal. Okay, yeah, we're gonna. We're I gonna see you, it. collaborator eight. Collaborator <laughs> eight. That's what they call me. All right, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna minimize that. All right, let's share this screen. Oh hey, Alex. I guess I should batch up the the comments. Alex Castillo is here. Cannot um, edit a read-only terminal. I've requested access from you. Arjun Yemenjeli is like David versus Linter. Is it great for, for your late night talk show? I just I would just turn off a of Linter past eight p.m. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's get back in here. Share screen, and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> let's see here. Document think this is the one let's 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 hope yes that's the one all right we are back <laughs> um let's... looks the same as the old one <laughs> it is no longer duplicating unnecessarily so that is a fun thing all right awesome so let's uh this is nuts this is a web version but here we are so we have error undefined and so we'll Actually, I've never, I don't think I've done this. So what would I do if I have this value update, you know, this could be set state, whatever. How would I update the error in this case? So that just be like, I guess we would. I would just use a second use state. Oh, uh, yeah, duh. You're like, well, I would just do the obvious thing. <laughs> error, set, error. And so use state. That created a hilarious out of sync issue on my end. <laughs> <laughs> I will close and reopen. Hey, it's there. All right. Oh dear. Is it still <laughs> just going nuts? Um. I I don't have any of your edits. I don't know. <laughs> How's that even possible? Oh, mine's duplicating lines now. You see duplicating lines now? Yep. Oh. I think that one person could only ever have it working. Yep. Uh, there's two. Oh, there's there's two documents open. That also. Oh no, when I save, there's two that open, and then I see them now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's. Oh oh, I also have two documents. Oh, and mine's duplicating. Oh oh, I just closed the whole tab. Okay, so I oh, it's doing it again in this. Wait, oh, it kind of did it in this one. So <laughs> it just cut off. Oh uh, man! All right, we might have to switch back to the uh, code sandbox. Code sandbox yeah. yeah, I have one prepped here. Okay, just all right, let's let's let me write like two more lines of code and see. Actually, you know what? Let's just go to the code sandbox because now I don't even know how I'm gonna run this yeah. and, and and do it. So, all right, please excuse us while we deal with our technical difficulties. Um, all right, stop streaming. Let's let's uh, load up your code sandbox and send me the link.
Actually, you already did. Let me just open up. We are literally 20 minutes in. <laughs> I hope everyone comes here for the comedy. Okay, reset the link. Jason has yet to do a Sean Connery accent. A reset the link. <laughs> All right. Ben just waves by and says, good luck, gentlemen. He's like, well, <laughs> as much as I'd like to watch you all try to figure out <laughs> the internet. <laughs> all right. What? No, I didn't. I now have two David Easts in here. Oh, oh do I have it loaded up on something else? Is that, oh, yeah, I do. I'm like, is that going to cause another infinite loop? Um, <laughs> Probably. Okay, I'm like quarantine, day 43, <laughs> figuring out VS Code live share. Okay, so that looks to be working. I will share the screen now. Oh wait, I'll share your screen. You're already you're you're there. Okay, you're there. I'm in. All right. So now we are <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> 21 minutes in, we are able to get working. Um, I really thought that VS Code live share was going to work. I should have probably tested that beforehand. <laughs> but you know what they say, it's always safe to test in production. Safest, yeah. That's it's the responsible uh, responsible well, I, approach. The goal, everyone who is still watching, um, we wanted to uh, be able to run that locally so I could run some like Preact build commands and we would see like the file sizes before lazy loading and then afterwards and then maybe even running some uh, tests against or like some actual like uh, profile performance profiling on Chrome to be like, oh, look at that. That was faster. And that would have been that would have been fun. Right. I think we may be able to do a deployment. Okay. Um, I don't know what the output of code sandbox I, is pre yeah, going to be. I don't know. I, I know a lot of the in-browser ones, since they do all in-browser builds, they don't do like optimized, like tree shaking ones. Yeah. Um, okay. But here we are. Uh, so we're in this file. And we, whatever, I should probably look at yours instead of mine. So you're in use, let's let's go to, since this works and use Firestore doc data, but it doesn't use, does it work with the error and pending ones now? No, so this Let's is where we sort of left off. We just basically, uh, we set pending to true if data is undefined, which is not what we want, but that was as far as we got. Um, right. So we had done the thing where like we have our, oh, we were using var. Um, we have our data and we update that. I guess we have to add the, uh, the ID key. Uh, we had removed the, um, the extra dependency from use effect. Right. So where we left off is basically we'll want to add that ID key. I think you call ID key, ID field. Um, and that will go in the hook and then we can uh, do our data equals snap that data snap that data uh, data at ID field equals what was it? Uh, snap that ID. Yes. Snap dot ID. And then, yes, there we go. Now we can have an ID. OK, so that's that. Um, almost feels like this should be an optional parameter. It totally should. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way to do that that's not gross. How about this? If not depths, depths. Uh, Don't try that at home. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a little scared and I'm a little uh, a little impressed all at the same time. <laughs> uh, I can make this clearer. Hold on. If not, yeah. Uh, no. Oh, what's a, what's a good default ID field? ID. Uh, I, I would just, you could, yeah. I mean, a, a real good default ID field would actually be underscore or, you know, the dunder. Uh, don't do the dollar. That, that's going to cause problems. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's well, no, underscore underscore ID underscore underscore. 
um, is a good one. Actually, just do just do underscore ID. Now I think about that could cause problems when it's saved. So fun fact about Firestore is that that's one of the very few uh, illegal patterns of keys is that dunder pattern. Mm. Um, Internal. And, yeah. I would just really like to thank the 17 of you who are still here. <laughs> Miraculously. <laughs> <laughs> inexplicably uh yeah okay so yeah that's where we left off um and this the difference with this one if i recall if we go down to where we're using it so where you in in your one yes. that copied over to vs code you were basically doing uh you'd call the hook like use firestore uh doc data i forget i think you had a better name but um and you would give it db dot collection dot you know cities yeah exactly dot doc yeah the, you would have to pass in a document reference right you have to have a reference to db um mm -hmm. which you have to get from a different hook so we had basically said okay let's just wipe that slate clean we'll initialize or grab or whatever get that firestore instance for you we'll pull it from context as long as you wrap your app in this provider we can get a reference to it we'll give you db uh you just give us back a reference to the document or collection that you want to load um, and so now I guess we could just log out like data error pending. Got it. And it should, we should get one render with undefined, undefined true. Mm -hmm. And then one render with the data undefined false. Right. Yeah. And so your and then your the depths array passed into this is useful. This is where you could provide ID field. Uh, yeah, so you could you could make this uh, ID, okay. and then you'd be able to do. Uh, oh, data what is ID. the third depths array? This is I, I can't remember that one. Uh, so so this is uh, you'd have two call signatures. You could do the initializer and depths, or you can uh, do okay. initializer ID field depths. OK. And so this would be if you wanted to recall this method, get a new reference to a, uh, a document, and then reflow this all through again. So that would change depths, which would change the depths that we're passing to use memo, which will recall init, mm. which will give us a new value for ref. That new value for ref will invalidate this use effect hook. It will unsubscribe the old use effect hook. Then the new use effect hook will run. We will subscribe to the new ref that you got from use memo. Uh, that will create its little updater. And then there we go. That's very similar to like a switch map in RxJS. If you are take your word for it, <laughs> that sounds cool and, and like a lot less and less confusing code. You're like, that. yes. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but uh, you'd probably have to use another Rx operator to get the exact uh, heuristics there. But like mm -hmm. uh, switch map will detect when like switch maps really good in cases like this, where like the where like the value changes or the the, the like let's say if someone clicks something a lot uh, and that's bad because you're like you know does creates all these subscriptions or something like that. Right. Uh, switch map will kill the old one and then restart the new one. Gotcha. Yeah, and even here, like you could totally so like this internal function. Uh, it depends on ID field. Oh, so we could we could even be more clever with this. Um, we could create one called const. Um, what would it be? Set data. Yes. And uh, this would be a callback. It would receive the collection snapshot. Or we, well, let's call it update from snapshot. Keys are sticking. Uh, so it receives the snap. It creates, it grabs the data. It updates ID field. So we'll need ID field as a dip here. Uh, and then call set state with that. And now we could just pass update from snapshot to ref.on snapshot, which mm -hmm. actually makes this a little simpler. We can just return the return value of that which is the unsubscribe function. And we don't need ID field here anymore because we're going to get a new update from snapshot. We do need 
update from Snapshot. Interesting. So actually, we haven't done a hell of a lot. <laughs> that that may or may not have been even mildly useful. Mildly, but it, but it's but somewhat mildly useful. I guess the theory was that I was going to avoid resubscribing, uh, but because we've added the ID field to the dependencies array here, it's it's going to resubscribe anyway. So, you know what? Let's roll that back. Um, we'll just use an inline. Wasn't worth it, but we can at least do the return. So. Yeah, so that's that's working now. Uh, so as pointed out in the comments, uh, now, so let's say you render once, we get our data, and we now change the depths array, mm -hmm. uh, which I think right now we've got weather card. Let's say let's let's parameterize weather card. Let's say weather card accepts a location, and we uh, pass that location here. So that could so be yeah exactly. Oh, nice. I see. Because that's more of the, uh, actually, it doesn't even have to be a page style. Uh, but I see that that is a very, that's it would insanely... be like you'd get from like a route parameter or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's insanely useful. Um, okay, sweet. And so now, like, theoretically, if we change this prop, I don't have a quick way to do it from re render, but we could just do it sort of in a hacky thing. Um, location set location. Set location. My fingers are slightly frozen from being outside. <laughs> yes, I wore a mask. Um, I don't even go outside. It's been snowing for three outside's days. Outside's <laughs> super overrated. Uh, so we could just do a set time out here. So one second after our mounting, we will call set location. What's another location code? Ooh, I, don't know, but I think you can do DEN for Denver, I think. Not Denmark. Ever, not Denmark. Oh, it might be Denmark too. Let's see what happens. I mean, we're gonna find out because the weather's gonna be pretty weird for uh, for Denver. Berlin. Is it's not up. going to update. Try SF. I, I'm usually let me let me pull up the console just to make um, I could swear SF was one. I I it was these are mostly European cities. I did this a very long time ago, and uh, that's why I'm having a hard time remembering. And that's why it's also in centigrade. I'm, I'm like 23 degrees. Is that cold? It's that hot? Like, yeah, 23 degrees is <laughs> two degrees above room temperature. Um, let's see, database. Let's see. Come on, come on. Um, cities, uh, do BOG. And that is for, uh, or actually, yeah, BOG. Uh, I can't believe this. The is notorious BOG? Oh, wow. Yes. BOG. So I'm guessing it's updating, but these are also updating in real time, right? Every, yes. what, every second? Uh, depends on the one. Oh, there is a D, there is a DEN. So those were working and an SF. All right. So those are all good ones. So, uh, all right. We got our first uh, debug session. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that should update. Yeah. So what we're, we're probably, what do we got? Oh, so we can. Get rid of this not implicit return here. So we're passing location, use Firestore data. Um, that should get us down to here. Here. Um, DB depths. It's going to return a new reference. Right. But we will recall. You could use memo. Do, you could for for funsies uh, do a console dot log on forty four to do ref dots uh, or yeah because you want to see the what is it ref dots query or something. Uh, oh, gosh, I think man, I think believe if you call two string, it will actually spit out the path. But I, I believe it's overridden. But I'm not completely certain. Don't. Object, object. We are getting bogged though. So the so the the depths array is changing. Okay. Ref. Uh, oh, I can just log out ref. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, because it'll give you the the info. Oh, um, uh, but it's going to be. be yeah. So we have a Berlin, on. and then we're getting a bog. Here, open that up. It's like if I see it. Oh, it keeps I can... resetting. 
<laughs> I believe it's uh, like uh, you could probably just go with that. They might be with that ID or with that path. Um, it's on that. It's on the. Uh... No, no dollar sign. No, no dollar sign. Yeah, there you oh. go. Cities yeah. ber. Cities ber. Never get the new reference. All right. So we're never getting the new reference. Mm, Bob Burr. <laughs> Patrick says in the comments, that's why you use TypeScript. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we we are. Yeah. Uh, but then if I use TypeScript, then it's going to yell at me when I do wrong things. And I just prefer to continue to do the wrong thing right now. Mm. But I do. I love TypeScript. I've, I've, I love TypeScript ever since I wanted. I told my boss in 2012 when it came out that we could write JavaScript now because TypeScript was C sharp in the browser. And he believed me, <laughs> he let me do it. <laughs> So ever since that moment, <laughs> I've loved TypeScript. Nice. It used to kind of uh, look in the browser when it came out. <laughs> All right. So why would it not be changing? So it's interesting that it changes. So it never even changes the. So the depths change, but the reference never changes. Is that something? Yeah. That so console that log. Depths at zero is going to be our thing, and then return. I have too many logs at this point. <laughs> Disable. Disable. Yeah, yeah. Bog, burr. It's kind of hard to tell if it's changing, though, right? Because, like, Berlin. Is it going to oh, wait. wait for? Because it's because the way on snapshot works is that it's like it's cold. So just calling on snapshot will give you a a value back. It should immediately give you a value back. It should, it, it's not hot, so it's not going to wait for the emission to actually happen. So like you call it over and over again, and it's going to give you that cold value um, that uh, on an initial call. They're kind of like I guess what's the the term for it is like they're I don't know if you're familiar with cold and hot uh, observables. But like, oh, so cold is like uh, the best uh, analogy I ever heard. Um, I can't remember his name now, but he had an amazing analogy for it. Was saying that a cold observable is effectively like watching a YouTube video. Um, you just hit play and it starts going. But a hot observable is like um, this live stream right here. You just punch the link in and you don't get, you just get the values from the top of the stream. Right. Uh, and so- It has yeah. no memory. It has no memory exactly, and this this is uh, the way that uh, on snapshot works is it's like what we refer to as like lukewarm, um, because you get the co initial cold value from it, um, like what is that state, and then um, uh, and then you get the hot after that. Uh, someone just commented said share replay to the rescue, which is a way for you to basically like uh, keep a reference of like the previous values. Tyler says, do you need set location in your use effect in app or does an empty array mean it only gets called once? Uh, empty array means it only gets called once. There we go. Uh, wait, sorry, uh, Tyler, set location, use effect in app. Yeah, so this uh, use effect with an empty array is just a, basically a mount lifecycle hook. Yes. Um, I seem to have created an infinite loop here, which makes sense because I am constantly providing a new init reference. So I think the problem is that our init is cached. Uh, okay. And it is going to return the stale closure value. Ah, crap. That's what I was wondering because we are doing all these uh, tricks with use memo, which is now we're back back in the two hardest problems of computer oh. science. Oh. Okay, sorry. No, go ahead. No, what did you find? We pass a function that returns now a par oh. parameterized thing. We pass the parameter, but we memoize that function here. Right. And so init is just always going to be the first one, which is always going to have the reference to Berlin. So really, depths goes here and that not here. Why is this complaining? Missing a dependency. Uh, oh, does it, so you've- Oh, oh depths itself. Yeah. Oh, oh, but oh, yeah, it's just because my console log. 
Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think this should make sense. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, so that makes sense. So we just, we needed to get, we needed to propagate this new function reference right. anytime location changes, which makes perfect sense. Uh, and that's actually nice because that concat we were doing before is super gross. Uh, it makes static analysis not work. So, so that's good. So we get a new initializer function with the new, uh, you know, surrounding closure as its context. That closure contains the new location value. That means init has it. We invalidate the memoization of init. Init gets recalled, produces a new ref, which is Firebase store or Firebase document. Flows through here on snapshot, etc. So that's all fine and good. And it and does appear to be working. Three. Yes, and we can see Bogota. Berlin, Bogota. And then it should keep getting updates for Bogota, for the notorious BOG. Bogota. <laughs> it sounds like a car brand. It's Bogota. <laughs> Bogota. It's yeah, the that makes capital of Colombia. <laughs> Bogota. Um, uh, hello, hello, Gary. Good to see you again. <laughs> And Arjun was saying that we need to make an anonymous account or someone's going to come in and like hack hack on our uh, one. Um, I think it's just limited to Jason and I, but you know, this oh, is an honor. They're going to charge us for all of our, our horrible looping code. I got this. I got I got the billing taken care of on this. This one's I think like, I pay for uh, code sandbox. I'm paying for these loops. <laughs> yeah. I think he's talking about the Firestore loops on it. Uh, uh, you're going to have all these reads. Um, yeah, but. Cool. But yeah, I got the you probably have caching disabled too. <laughs> In the feed, this is why you'd use the Firestore emulator because then it's just on your machine. Never heard of it. Oh yeah, we have a whole local suite of emulators, so Sweet. you can pretty much run everything uh, locally, like Cloud Functions, Firestore, Real Time Database, and then uh, so it's really really cool. Also works super great in CI. You had mentioned before that on snapshot can call in can be called immediately. Yes. Can that ever be synchronous? No, not. So that's an interesting question. So Firestore, no, I really hope so. I, I'm like 99% sure. But the only reason why I'm kind of scared about saying that is because with the real time database, yes, <laughs> it can be synchronous, right. which is like, uh, we haven't changed it ever. It was a mistake we did initially. And then uh, years ago, like five years ago, and uh, we have yet to ever fix it because it could actually break people. And so right. we've all thought about passing in like a quirks <laughs> mode. <laughs> well, I'm even thinking like there might be a use case for that, but really you would want to be able to to know for sure, like right. give me the current value if you have one. That's that's what real time database used to do is if there was a value it, and it was like something conditionally something like if you called it recently and there are values in the cache it would then just return synchronously, um, which uh, is like great as far as like app performance and like latency compensation goes, but it's bad as far as like expecting it to always be <laughs> asynchronous. Right. So I guess now we're at the point where we want to do that whole lazy loading load. indicator. Yes. Well, oh yeah, good. good oh, point. Yeah, let's do the lazy load, or you know, let's let's try to at least. Um, uh, so in order to do that, well, so let's let's set up the loading variable, which is pretty quick. So we're gonna have loading, yes. and instead of a, just a constant, it will be uh, state uh, set loading. Sorry, equals use state. And loading will be false. Actually, in this case, loading is always going to be initialized to true because we never have a synchronously available value. Right. Um, and so here we can call set loading true. And we know from last time that if loading is already true, it will not immediately, it will actually just drop the update on the floor, which is great because what we don't want to have is a use effect hook that immediately invalidates state. That would be a loop. Right. Um, oh, and actually, it was pending. Bleh. Uh, and then here we would do set pending false. You could use the same state object for this. I'm lazy, uh, so I didn't. Uh, and then error will do pretty much exactly the same thing. We we'll use null as like the no error value, just so it's kind of clear. Uh, right. set pending true. We won't clear the error when we start loading. We will clear the error when we finish loading. Um, 
And in the case, is there a, an error hook for um, so There's an error callback. So you uh, second one, there is error. Uh, so oh, after okay. your <laughs> error. And you said it can sometimes be undefined. I'm actually not sure. I believe that it only gets called if the error exists. I'm just doing that, you know, to make sure. Um, David said to. <laughs> so, and then we could just do set error, error. Uh, and actually, at this point, we would also want to set data, I guess. Do we want to preserve the old data if there's an error, or do we want to just null it out? Um, that's actually a really good question. I would let's just preserve it for now because yeah. from the we user, preserve it during loading. So right. But, yeah. Oh, we do want to do set pending false. Yes. So it's completed, but it's errored. Um, so now those booleans, we sort of have our try state well represented here, and we should see them. So we get undefined null true. So first one is uh, no data not errored is loading. And then data didn't error isn't loading. Nice. And then we got an update. All right. Oh yeah, we switched from Berlin to Bo to Bogota, Bogota. <laughs> um, which meant that Do you want me to uh, trigger an error? <laughs> Uh, no, so we should be able to see okay. this, right? So it should be, oh, right, yeah. So we we propagated the update, but we are preserving, oh, this is really hard when it constantly scrolls. Um, we are preserving the old value, oh my God. Uh, the old value, right? So we're still showing Berlin, but we're saying, oh, by the way, in the background now, we are going and we are fetching the new document for Bogota. And then that comes back, the value gets updated. So really the only representation you would have here is pending, which I think I had a spinner. Um, it's probably too quick to see. Yeah. Because also, uh, this, oh no, I think you're only using, the, we're not using the persistence cache, we're using the memory cache, but it's just still gonna be really fast. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like we're not throttling network or anything here. I wonder if I do opacity. You could you could sort of see it flicker. You probably definitely not in the live stream. Yeah, I, uh, was it? Oh, I thought I could see it, but maybe semi visible, <laughs> right? But it is happening, right? So it's it, it's being set. Um, we actually don't care about error for now because it's never going to get triggered. So, although that does look really it's easy for me to trigger error, though. <laughs> I, all I have to do is change the security policy to say <laughs> no one can read. <laughs> it's just yeah. like two seconds away. <laughs> yes, Lint. Fine, I will leave the arrow there. Um, so that's working. So now we were going to do the lazy load. Yes. So, so lazy load would be right now, like, so we have our, our Firebase app provider. Mm -hmm. Give it a config. Firebase app provider up here uh, assumes that Firebase is already available as a global, right? So it's a static Correct. import. Uh, so if I recall, this is using either Webpack or Parcel. Um, both of them are fine. We can move these out. And the first time Firebase app provider gets rendered would be a very reasonable place to, mm -hmm. to kick off these imports. Um, yes. so, and so we could, uh, again, use, use memo for that. We could actually, so if we do, this, we change them to um, import Firebase app. Import. And you need to do, yeah, you need to do them uh, in the, you can't- In like, order? Yeah, exactly. You can't all of them erase them. You need to do a, uh, yeah, make that async. And then this makes it really easy to, and await that and then await that, yeah. Yeah, and then you don't, nothing will return from the second one. So that, so that should give us Firebase. The only thing that we're going to need here is, um, so Fire, Firebase app will now be a promise. Right. Um, oh, I see. To get that back, you would have to await it. 
which is fine. And I think that's okay. So, so now our provided value is a promise. Right. Uh, and so that, oh, thank you, uh, TypeScript inference. Now <laughs> this needs to await the promise, which I think we can do. Um, so we'll have our um, DBs. I'm just going to use use state here. Um, yeah. Just because I'm lazy. And that is going to be use state. Uh, really here, if Firebase is available synchronously, we should we should make that something that developers can use. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to say, uh, let's just create a function called load Firebase. And this function is going to do the async stuff and return a promise. We're going to drop async await here, but we will still preserve the, the semantics. We'll do import Firebase app dot then uh, that'll give us Firebase. Uh, it'll give us um, the module interface. Mm -hmm. That's Firebase. It's going to be module default. I can never remember the ordering, so I'm being lazy there. And then we do return import Firebase Firestore. And so this can be hoisted. Mm. Um, this is going to be our Firebase promise. We return the import that will resolve. Uh, and then after, um, we'll just return the original reference to Firebase. So that should work. So we import Firebase app, store it, import Firestore, and then just return that original reference. And then the trick here is we're going to actually do return promise dot uh, value. I will call it Firebase equal to Firebase. Oh, so you can, and now you return the promise, but you're basically creating a property on top of the promise that could be a resolved exactly. value. And uh, that way, so what happens is like, if you have a hook that runs, you don't need to pointlessly await the promise to call set state before you can init. Uh, you no. can just kick it off right then and there. It probably doesn't matter too, too much because in this case, we're going to be awaiting that db.collection call anyway. Right. Um, but it does at least make this a little bit easier. So Firebase equals await load Firebase. Oh, and we're, we're going to want to cache that. So yes. um, let Firebase promise. Uh, if Firebase promise return Firebase promise. And let's just use that name everywhere. OK, it's gross, but it works. Um, and there's ways to make this less gross too, but the, oh, pattern, yeah, sure. the pattern is nice. Well, and actually, I mean, the nice part is like, if you wanted to do lazy loading, at least you could just centralize and contain the gross. Exactly. Uh, and then everything else just uh, like in our use Firebase app, I think we had a one that was going to return the context. Use Firebase app. Firebase app. I've never ever thought about building a library that does this, just this, this little like loading utility library. And just yeah. so that you can do all the grossness inside and then basically like just return this thing. You're like, this isn't gross inside. The API looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But well, actually, now that I look at this, um, this is a provider. Mm -hmm. Any call site that's using use Firebase app is subscribed to the context value. Right. Which means we could just re-render the provider with the updated non-promisified Firebase. We don't need to necessarily listen for those promises at each call site. Oh, I see. So technically, use Firebase app. Reinitializing app. So we could really just do. Um, const value is Firebase app dot Firebase. Um, if uh, what was it? If there's no value, right? Uh, then Firebase app dot then, and then we just have to call set state again. Um, so how would they handle it in the case where, I see what you're doing. You're trying to, at least I think I see what you're doing. You're trying to make it so they don't have to, um, 
worry about the awaiting or the asynchronous loading state of it. Um, right. You just worry about that on render passes where basically it's like, oh, we did a render, nothing's here. Oh, that thing happened. Now let's do another render. It is here. And um, you're trying to find a way in the provider to, to do that. So that does that mean then that the app provider itself becomes stateful? It is technically, it has this state. Yeah. I guess it technically it is stateful, but we start, but I always think about it as like, I guess I, I guess you can use it as an inherently as a state machine, but I always think about it as like a static sort of little like cached provider thing. That's like, Hey, just give me that thing. Yeah. Know, and, and to me, like, that's kind of the reason why I was like, eh, do we, do we do this? Why don't we, would try it without. Um, it be a clever way. Cause it, cause it is nicer to worry about, um, your code looks a lot nicer on our, if you're just worrying about it on the render pass. Cause you're like, Oh, it's just like in a second, we'll have a new render pass with this stuff. Yeah. That, it'll call into you when the thing changes. Exactly. Which is nice because that's how you want your code. Usually that's how you want your code structured. It's just like, but, Hey, I have these certain values. I'll do this. Also gets run. awkward though. Right. Like right. if, if we, so like, let's say we did that provider is either going to pass you a materialized Firebase instance or a promise now in here somewhere when we, we can't make any of these hook calls conditional we have to do like oh if firebase app is a promise do nothing <laughs> i guess like just wait so we're yeah. like we're still I, we're still gonna have to wait in this right i guess you're just you're just deciding where ergonomically you're waiting <laughs> yeah uh yeah okay so let's 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 keep on trucking with the with the one that we have yeah so this is going to be uh, so if. Oh, so here we can say uh, if Firebase app has a dot Firebase property, then we'll use it. Um, and then if there is no DB, um, then we will call. Um, By the way, Sasha, I see you in the comments. You're making my my life a lot easier. <laughs> He's answering people's <laughs> questions, and I'm trying to answer and like pay attention to the code at the same time. So I'm like, oh, uh, uh. <laughs> 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 uh, so oh, let's call this Firestore. So Firestore set Firestore. This is so super a reference to, to, get, to get your approach on this because we've been working on it. Uh, like Jeff Hewlett and James Daniels and I've been working on React Fire, which uses similar hooks. And your patterns are like you know the core is similar, but a lot of the stuff you're doing on the side or some of the loading patterns are different than what we would have done. And and I really appreciate that like separate perspective. So now. So this, so this makes sense. So we run through, if we have a synchronous access to Firebase, we grab it. In that case, uh, we will create a, uh, grab a reference to the DB, which is always the same reference, um, which will be Firestore. Mm -hmm. If we didn't, uh, we will run into here. We, we need to do if not Firebase. Um, we will await Firebase app like that. Uh, if we didn't, we will go to the promise, which we know will be a promise, await it, and then when that revolves, we call, resolves, we call set Firebase. Technically, I really don't want this as a dependency. Oh, no, never mind, it's fine. It, this will rerun again. Firebase will be defined at that point, though, so it, we won't care. This will just be a Oh, that's right, because now Firebase is, is, is technically yeah. stable. Right. Yeah, so this is now our little state machine that will resolve the promise. Right. And then eventually we will get DB. It, if the promise is not yet resolved, DB will be undefined, which is what we now have to pull through here. So we don't want to call init until we have the DB. So we do a guard. Um, Right. Now, so now ref in this case might be undefined. 
so we are already checking for ref. Uh, here we can do if not ref return. If there's, if there's no ref, there's nothing to subscribe to, so don't bother. Right. Um, and then the only other thing we want to change, so data is going to be initialized to undefined. That's fine. Pending is already going to be initialized to true. So actually, that's also fine. So currently, the way this will work is the first time this runs through and there's the unresolved promise, DB is undefined. We never call a init. We never get ref. Nothing happens. There's no state. So we just return the default values here. Undefined uh, is pending and no error, which appears to have worked. And that's where we could provide the like the initial value. We don't do that now, but we would provide right. the initial value, and then it would just kick that off. Right. So actually, you know, maybe that's the clever thing. Um, I wonder if there's a way to do that. That's not super awkward. You could almost just say, "No, we will call your init," uh, and it's just your responsibility to say if there's no DB reference, return the initial value. Mm, so you, you that's really a little bit awkward. It is a little awkward because, and also I find that that pattern of providing data initially is is more of a, like, it's not hard to do it, but like, where does it come from? And so unless right. you're doing like a state transfer and you're set up for that, it's it becomes ergonomically weird for your app because you're like, hi, thanks for coming to the app. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're doing some stuff right now. Okay, here well, Although Theoretically, that object needs to be like roughly the same shape as the one you're expecting back. Yes, and there are ways to to make that a bit easier, and that's why the um, that's why we don't actually return the snapshot because then initial value becomes a lot weirder because then you either have to have you'll have two different shapes that are returning a snapshot or your data, or you have to mock the snapshot, which is ugly, and you shouldn't ever have to do that. So I've just added a fourth parameter. Yeah, that's, that's like the really basic. Moshe asks, is this a good usage of React Suspense? And that's actually, uh, this is some of the things that we have done with React Fire and Suspense. Is, is it, it, you know, it's a different way of handling these loading states. Yeah, in, in Suspense, uh, especially like for initial hydration, Rather than, and actually, this is one of the things I wanted to highlight. In suspense, you could literally do this by saying, hey, uh, if we don't have data, so no initial data was provided, and we're pending, right? Pending and pending dot then, right? So we, we're, we've kicked off a promise. Um, then throw pending. And mm -hmm. basically, that would just say, like, hey, like, and so yeah, we, we do support this. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, and that's why it's nice it's, to already have that nice loading sort of tri-state. Like not really a tri-state, but it feels like a tri-state. Um, your your are you going to use suspense thing is literally like a bit you could flip. Like you could make that a parameter. That way you're not saying like, hey, you could only use this with suspense or you have to wrap this in an error boundary or, or a suspense route or whatever just to, to make it work. Really, you're just saying like, you can make this reflow nicely with suspense. And that way, if you wanted to do that and wrap this in um, in a, a suspense route or whatever, or wrap some smaller piece of it in a suspense route in the case where we had something more than an app that was the Firebase data, that would be very plausible. And you would also have a nice effect here. So like, you could choose at that point whether you would want to suspend the tree when transitioning between data that you have to new data that you have, or whether you want to allow the tree to re-render with that pending Boolean, right? You could actually either ask the consumer, right? Have them tell you mm -hmm. via property, I want to do that or not. And th that way, like there are certain UIs, this one is actually a reasonable example where it would not make sense to suspend when we're like getting a new snapshot. Um, there's, there's no reason to to mark the tree as a nerd just because you you are about to get some new data. It's an update to data. It's in place. Uh, in place updates don't tend to necessitate those things. Versus if you were like changing routes and building up a new tree, then you could certainly uh, see a case where that would make sense. Basically, hold off rendering the tree. We don't have data yet, and your loading state is not going to be useful. 
Yeah, we we actually in React Fire, if you do provide initial value, it doesn't suspend. Right. Yeah. That's that's. I was just gonna say that's that it is a perfect, um, <laughs> a perfect thing to use. So if there is no initial value and no data, right. and we're pending, then suspend. Right. So that way, like, it just makes total sense, right? It's like you get suspense if you remove it. You don't get suspense if you add it because you have a great loading state that you're already indicating. Um, and in that regard, like in a UI like this, where the sort of a skeleton UI makes a nice loading state, uh, it does feel kind of nice to just not have a dedicated loading state to just have like your view just gets rendered with different data. Right. Um, yeah. That that's synchronous feeling code. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we so this is pretty much to the point now where to recap it, we have uh, added the lazy loading, or first we did the uh, pending and error state. These guys. And, and then we um, switched it to also doing lazy loading. And so now when, I wish we had, maybe we can do that next time. We can actually work on like getting it bundled up. But mm -hmm. um, that would be cool. So we could uh, show like the performance profile of like, hey, look how, and then we, we actually do like some basic server transfer. We can show like the functioning app, like the functioning weather, and then we can see it. Weather is actually a really good example of that because you could have the initial weather state and and then if there's any, I mean, I guess the weather wouldn't really need to be updating in real time, but you know, something like that where the initial state is fine. And um, in the past, actually, the demo I created was something uh, called uh, table tracker or something, and it basically right. track uh, the capacity of like restaurants or movie theaters or something. And then, because that initial value is fine, it's probably not going to change in like you know seven seconds. Right. But then, if you have the app continuously open, it will start updating. And so, it, it's a nice way of splitting out your your real time values from just the need to know right now values. Yeah, like a next step for this would be. A adding pre-rendering or server-side rendering, and then yeah. B, uh, you know, injecting that into a script tag in the body, and maybe using that data here um, right. rather than the static value. You'd be like, here's the weather from when you requested the page, which was maybe only a couple seconds ago. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's yeah. It's a whenever you have read-only data, it works really well that way. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was that was interesting with the live share duplicate bug. <laughs> But for that to the VS Code it. team, <laughs> I know, I know. Someone, I hope no one on the VS Code team is watching that because they're like, "Great." <laughs> Probably some some awful thing that we were doing. This it's okay. Holy right, wrong. No, yeah, exactly. I I don't think that could be. They're like, "Could you not have six at the same tab open?" <laughs> like, yeah. Um, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to, I never want to shame anyone for anything happening because I'm not sure if it was even their fault or anything. It's a beautiful product. I very much enjoy using VS code. So yep. yeah, uh, code is hard, but thank you all for joining us. Uh, next time. Yeah. We might do some, uh, some perf audits of it or, you know, we'll figure something else to do and, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode of Jason and David build preact in a very, or preact fire in a very unorganized fashion. Woo. Woo.